Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I know it's been a minute or two, but we're not here to talk about that today. Today, we're here to talk about this little guy that's been sitting in my garage for the last couple of months, but I've just been dying to take this thing apart and show you guys what happened when I hit the wall at over 100 kilometers an hour. So as you can see, it's in a total twist mess. And we're gonna come up with a game plan today on how we're gonna actually take this completely apart and hopefully salvage the brakes that are inside. The wheel's completely folded over. The caliper, from what I can tell, does not look like it's actually been damaged. Fingers crossed, along with the rotor itself. It looks like it folded, but didn't quite make contact with it. So we're gonna find all that out real quick here. But before we get started in taking it apart, let's take a little bit of a closer look at how bad the damage really is and what happens when you hit the wall that fast. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this thing and show you just how bad it was. So if you've watched the previous videos, you did see it while it was on the car and you saw pretty much just this exterior piece, right? Because this is all we could really show you because we really struggled to get this thing off while we were trying to get that guy out. So we eventually got the K member off, which you can see is just over there, right? And that's how we kind of dropped the motor and the whole front suspension down. That's how we were able to free it. So when we start to go around, this is where the carnage really ensued. So, <laughs> as you can see, the, the mount for the Cortex coilover obviously completely destroyed, but it's just the mount. The inner cartridge inside, from what I can tell, looks okay. So, we should still be able to get this rebuilt. Cortex has already told me they can provide me with a new one of these guys, no problem. The shaft, now I really hope this is showing up on camera, but it is bent just slightly. I've already replaced these before. They're really not that expensive. They're like about $105 US. And the reason I replaced them before is the adjusters on the top. When I got these coilovers used, the adjuster setting just was, it wasn't quite smooth. It was really binding. And when I send it in for a rebuild, they said, yeah, you know what? We could just replace it. I'm like, okay, well, how much? They're like 105 bucks and it's the whole shaft. I was like, wow, that's quite reasonable for how expensive the coilovers are. So that's gonna get replaced. The uh, sway bar end link, it is bent. So that'll have to get replaced as well. Not that big of a deal. But when you start to look at how the rim just cracked straight through there and is completely folded over through here, it hit the aluminum brake ducts that I had installed. So depending on how bad that is, I might be able to stretch it or you know hammer it back out. But if not, eh, you know, is what it is. You just get another one. It's not the end of the world. Control arm, you know, bushing looks okay, bushing looks okay. But then, hello, look at this Mr. Ball joint here who's decided to do a complete 90 degree turn here. Uh, yeah, that's done. I unfortunately had to cut the outer tie rod end. It was, I was struggling to try and get this wheel out. The rod was already kind of bent anyway, so I was like, well, I'm gonna have to replace that, so get it out of my way, I cut it. Uh, I will replace these bump steer kits from Cortex as well. Uh, I think these ones are actually Maximum Motorsports, but whatever, whichever ones they want to send me is fine. I will replace those uh, just as a safety precaution. There's a lot of stuff, wheel bearings, wheel studs, that kind of stuff I'm just going to replace regardless. I don't, I don't care if it looks okay or not. You know, they're just, they're inexpensive items that when you're going to this length of a rebuild process, which we're going to do, it's it's just a, a necessary evil. So tires obviously destroyed. So the game plan that I'm thinking here for this is I'm going to cut the tire across here and then hopefully if it have to do it again, I might cut it over here as well if I have to section it into two. If I can section it in one and just pry it off of the wheel, that will be the ideal situation because I'm pretty sure cutting through the belts on this tire is not gonna be fun and it's gonna make a giant mess. So let's have the carnage ensue here. Let's start taking this thing apart and let's see if that caliper down there is all messed up or if it's okay. And if that rotor is all messed up as well. Ugh, this is just not gonna be fun. All right guys, let's see how this goes. All right, let me just show you what I just struggled with. Yeah, I've never cut a tire off a wheel before, so I'm not gonna pretend that I'm some sort of expert, but 
man, I mean, I know there's a belt in them. I've, I used to mount tires all day long for a living, right? So I knew I was gonna have to overcome the belt here and then obviously we're gonna have a belt in the actual tread section as well. But just to get through this was daunting and it definitely not the tool for the job. But um, sometimes you just gotta adapt and uh, figure out a different strategy. Okay, so hopefully, it's starting to move. But hey, look at that. Well, what do we know? Oh. And there we go. Okay, well, one destroyed NT01, and we are getting closer to revealing the disaster that happened here. Now, normally I'd be very gentle, but we all know <laughs> we're not saving very much here. This is challenging with just one hand. I will admit that, but I'm doing it for you guys. I'm doing it for you so you can see it. My God, okay. So step one's done. Now we need to start working on this. It's that bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's pretty good. But amazingly, absolutely amazingly, the tube itself is still pretty good. Got a good dent there, but overall the tube is actually really straight. Okay, now that I got the coilover off, I'm gonna try and get the arm off next here. So. One very savaged, savagely destroyed control arm. I mean, look at that stress. Okay, plan B, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. So the only way I see this thing coming apart here, and I've been hammering at this, it ain't moving. I mean, it's the, why they're built well. I'm gonna try and do a couple of relief cuts along here, and just along here, and see if I can fold these pieces back. So I'm not gonna try and cut through the whole thing. I'm just gonna try and do a couple of relief cuts and then I'll hammer it over and hopefully that'll weaken the aluminum enough that uh, I can get this folded away and we can pull this stuff out. So I'm gonna set the camera down, let you guys watch while I do that. And hopefully, hopefully we can get all of this out and finally see if this is still okay or not. But that tire's definitely done. We're not saving that. That coilover we're saving though. Control over arm? Definitely not. All right. Okay, that was fun. Well, you know, in this garage, I feel like I have every single tool except for the one you need right in the moment. <laughs> and that happened to be an angle grinder with a good blade on it. Luckily, my neighbor uh, is a pipe fitter, so does it by trade. And I said, hey, I just need to cut this uh, wheel. Do you got a, an angle grinder? He's like, is it aluminum? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, that stuff's really tricky to cut. Here, I'll just cut it real quick for you. So his tool I don't mind letting him do it but man that was the better tool for the job so now ta-da there we go so little nick on it that was from me earlier but that's nothing too bad you can see the spacer the caliper everything's there let's pull this out and let's see if it is okay or if we are out uh, a caliper I quickly covered that up earlier. I did it off film just to make sure because obviously all the dust and stuff like that, I do not want to get all that inside the caliper. All right. Doesn't help that this thing's freaking heavy. Oh. All right. First time looking at it. So far, pretty good. Little nick on the powder coat there, but all in all, I think we got lucky. I think we have a perfectly good caliper. It's hanging on to the back here, but I think we are in good shape. Everything looks all right. So 
That means I have saved myself a brake caliper. Maybe a rotor as well. We'll see. Definitely not a wheel. <laughs> but that is, uh, God, so much better to have that thing out and know that it's in okay shape. Obviously I'll take it all apart and we'll, we'll see, but I don't see a single mark on it except for a couple of nicks on the powder coat, which really, I mean, you can see them there a little bit. Not a big deal, not the end of the world. So just a little bit of powder coat. It's not a show car, it's a track car, so I'm not overly worried. It's my other spacer. <laughs> see the giant bolts. I will replace these no matter what. Um, it's actually a Ford Racing spindle that comes with the extended ARP wheel studs. So I'll run that. Obviously we know we're already gonna get rid of the, uh, the bump steer kit, so the outer tie rod. That's, yeah, we're just gonna change that. Not even gonna bother. Brake pads seem to be okay as well. Coilover definitely has seen better days, but can be rebuilt. And that big chunk of aluminum is going to the scrapyard. All right, so looks like that was a pretty good, successful uh, little teardown. Managed to get that out, so I'm pretty happy about that. Okay, so the one thing I realized that I didn't tell you guys last time, and I didn't actually film it, was taking the motor out, and I want to explain why. So we had all the intentions to actually film it while we were pulling the motor out, but it just turned into a giant whirlwind. It got crazy late, so super dark. It wouldn't really work for filming wise. I had the doors open, stuff like that, and then it started bucketing rain. So my buddies are cold, we're wet, we're super tired, and it just trying to get the camera into that mix just didn't work. But I do want to show you guys a couple key things here now that the motor's out and I'll actually show you some stuff on the motor as well that we found once we were pulling it out. So I'll show you a couple things in the engine bay first and then we'll go from there. We hacked it like crazy to get this motor out. We had to cut the whole front section out obviously and then we dropped the motor to get the wheel out and to get the other side out. So we dropped the whole K-member, we disassembled it on the ground and then we brought it back up and then kind of had to turn it like out this way to get it out because of all the damage that you guys can see in here. I mean, it was extensive, uh, just everything that happened. And again, when you look at it here, and when I talked about it earlier, that wheel hitting the firewall, and that's what caused the wheel to buckle. There you go, that's the spot. I mean, you're seeing whoop, like <laughs> pretty much right through almost into the passenger compartment. And it buckled the seal here. I mean, just total chaos, right? Complete and utter destruction. This whole section completely done. When you start looking down the line, you know, that's done there as well. Obviously folded in. And, and like I showed you guys in the last video, all that, it's kind of dark, it's hard to tell, but everything's just crinkled in here. It's all buckled. It was not good. So the one thing we found when we pulled the motor, I mean, overall, it, the motor turns over perfectly fine. No issues there whatsoever. Everything looked great on this side. Excuse the fan, it's just the heaters in the garage here. But this side. So I told you guys that, and you can see right there and right there, that the engine mount broke. Well, when the engine mount broke, the whole engine swung inside the K-member and it made contact with the K-member in the oil pan. So, gonna pull the pan eventually. I will take a look. It's pro I'm probably just gonna replace this. Interestingly enough, one of the cool new oil pans that's recent to hit the market is that new GT500 oil pan. And it's actually kind of cool. So it's off of the new GT500 and it's a cast aluminum pan. It's a little bit bigger than the factory Coyote pans and it actually has the same baffling in it as the Moroso pan, and it comes with an actual high flow oil pump in the package. It's like 700 bucks or something like that. It's super cheap for what you're getting. So I'm probably gonna go that route considering this pan was almost, I think 500 bucks or something like that. So and this is all US dollar, right? So when you start adding it up, I'm like, that just makes more sense to get that pan, which is OEM, as long as it's gonna fit. One of my good buddies is actually in the process right now of test fitting that into one of his cars down in the States, down in Phoenix. So if he manages to pull it off without any issues, then that's definitely the route I'm gonna go. So the replacement car, this has been coming up quite a bit. 
I get tons of guys uh, linking me, sending me links to, to cars that are for sale. I really appreciate everything, but I just wanna kind of maybe update everyone and reiterate what I've explained before and make sure I'm crystal clear. So I'm up in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. So west, uh, northwest coast. One of the challenges is, if I was to import a car from the United States, I have to import it. So I have to go through registration and I have to get the vehicle inspected. So if I go and buy a car that's already turned into like a crazy track car, it's gonna be very difficult for me to actually get the thing inspected here in BC and to get it registered for the road because I still kind of want to have a street car. So that's the first challenge that I run into with those cars. Second, unfortunately, Canadian dollar versus US dollar sucks right now. So a car that's like, you know, 12, 13 grand, all of a sudden becomes almost $20,000 Canadian. And then you still have to transport it here. You still have to do all the duty and importing and just the hassle of it. So that's been one of my challenges lately. I found a couple of cars that I thought would work out really well and I was pursuing them. But when I started adding it up, they were cars that were stripped like shells, rolling chassis. But you start to add up all the little bits and pieces that you need in the car. And it, it turns into a twenty, thirty thousand dollars project just because you need so many little things to make a complete car again. So I still think the best strategy for me is to find a running, driving car that I'm going to gut everything out that I don't need and put all of my stuff back into it. The problem is here in BC, which they always call it bring cash, cars here are the most expensive they are in the rest of the country. So a guy running a V6 Mustang with, I don't know, let me try and do the conversion, I would say under 100,000 kilometers, so that's under, let's say 60, 70,000 miles, a guy wants like 14 to 16,000 bucks for one of those cars here. And I just don't see that value in them, especially when I know I'm gonna gut it. Now I can sell some parts, I can sell the engine, I can try and recoup some of that cash, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that uh, and make it make the most sense. If that is what they truly cost, then that's just what it's gonna cost me and I'm just gonna to have to work my way through it and get one of those project cars so that I can start rebuilding it. In the meantime though, my plan is to actually start to get some of these parts off, get them out for repair, get the new Apex wheels coming in, get everything ready so I have all the parts ready to go so that when I do have the new car, it's just a matter of throwing everything in and hitting the track. But that brings up my next point, this season. We're already in February right now, and it's most likely not gonna happen for this season. I've you know, got a lot of other priorities. I've, I'm a family man, I've got a wife and kids. I need to make sure that I'm taking care of them and their needs are met first. So I might be making a few other changes here on the channel and bring in an additional car that's gonna be kind of like the new daily and also a track weapon. So. I haven't made my decision up 100% on which car I'm going with, but it is something that I'm going to be trying to do in the next couple months. Get it prepped, get it ready so that I can actually participate in some track day stuff this year. Still bring some cool content, still do some track stuff, and then hopefully in the meantime, we find the alternative for this car and we start to actually do the rebuild. So once again, guys, thank you for being so patient with me. I appreciate all the support. I really, truly do, guys. I will make a few more videos. We will finally maybe address why I crashed. I will break it all down for you guys and explain everything in detail. Once again, like I said in the last video, it is 100% my fault. I know what I did wrong, but I think it's important that I maybe share that with everyone else. So bye for now. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.